こんにちは。I am so pleased to be here today at the United States and Japan and announce a new partnership to educate girls across the globe. Right now, as you heard, 62 million girls worldwide are not in school. When we talk about this issue, we often focus on the economic barriers girls face, school fees or uniforms, or how they live miles from the nearest school. And have no safe transportation. Or how the school in the community doesn't have bathroom facilities for girls. So they just can't attend. But we all know that the problem here isn't just about, he just about infrastructure and resources, it's also about attitudes and beliefs. It's about whether fathers and mothers are simply fathers and mothers. Think their daughters are just as、uh, worthy of an education as their sons. It's about whether communities value girls simply for their bodies, for their household labor, their reproductive capacities, or whether they value girls for their mind as well. It's about whether Societies cling to laws and traditions that oppress women, while whether they view women as a full citizen entitled to the same rights and freedoms as men. And、uh, if we are being honest with ourselves, we have to admit that these kind of challenges aren't just limited to the developing world. For example, while we have made tremendous strides in girls' education in the United States and Japan, women in both our two countries still struggle with the Still struggle to balance the needs of their families with the demand of their careers. We still struggle with the outdated belief that women, women, are not,、uh, women are not both accomplished professional and a devoted mother, that she, has to, that she has to choose between the two. But the reality is that. When we put l i m i t on like this on women's lives, we stifle their potential. And,、uh, more, important, and more important, we miss, out on, we miss out on so much of what they, have, what they have to offer our societies. And for me,、uh, like many、uh, young girls, I was often primarily defined by my relationship to the me in my life. I was my father's daughter. Or even though I was just as smart as my brother, I could hit the ball just as far, I could run just as fast, I was always just his little sister. When I got to school,、um, when I got to school, I sometimes encountered teachers who assumed that a girl from a humble background. Wouldn't be a successful student. And I was even told that I would never accept it, get accepted to the prestigious school like Princeton University, so I shouldn't even apply.
uh, like so many other women, I get the message that uh, I get the message that someone like me uh, wouldn't supposed to have uh, big dreams that I should keep my head down uh, my voice quiet uh, I should make myself a little smaller to fit other people's modest expectations but I was lucky I had the I had my parents who believed in me, who urged me to speak up and to make myself heard in the world. I held fast to my dreams. I worked hard in school. I went ahead and I applied to Princeton and I got accepted. I went on to build a pioneering legal career. Legal career. Um, I went on to become a, uh, I, I went on to become a lawyer, a city government employee, a hospital executive, the director and the director of an organization that trained young people to serve their community. And most of all, I became a mother, which is by far the most important job I would ever have in my life. Um, now. I continue now uh, while continuing my career now continue my now continuing now continuing my career while raising my daughters wasn't easy but for me this was the right decision for me being a mother made a better professional because coming home every night to my girls reminded me what I was working for and uh, being my professional made, a, made me a better mother because by pursuing my dreams I was modeling for my girls how to pursue their dreams And uh, uh, like so many, uh, like so many uh, other women, I was able to achieve this balance. Uh, there are two main reasons to achieve this balance. First, I had the support from my husband and family and from my employers who recognized the value of hiring women and uh, providing flexible workplaces. And uh, Prime Minister Abe and President Obama are working very hard to creating policies like this that allow women and men to be excellent professionals and excellent spouses and parents. And second, and second, like so many other women across the globe, um, I was able to achieve a bus. Uh, I was able to achieve the both professional and uh, personal goals because of my education. My education was truly the starting point for every opportunity 
I have I have had in my I have had in my life. But I know that for every girl like me, there are so many others across the globe. who are just as smart, just as capable, just as hungry to succeed, but they never have the chance to go to school. That is why the, Amer that is why the United States government recently launched uh, the Global Girls, the new Global Girls education effort named called Let Girls Learn. As part of this initiative, US Peace Corps volunteers uh, as part of this initiative, US Peace Corps volunteers will work by side by will work side by side with local leaders, families and the girls themselves to help girls go to school and uh, stay in school. They'll be creating mentoring programs like uh, girls leadership camps and so many others but as Mrs. Abe said uh, but as Mrs. Abe said of course no one country can solve this problem alone and that is why I am here today in Japan. Japan is one of America's closest and most important allies and developing development partners. In fact, Japan is the largest aid donor in all of Asia. Japan is uh, once again leading the way with 42 million yen investment in girls education. With this new commitment, Japan is truly the setting. Japan is truly setting the standard for countries around the world. With this new partnership between our two countries, we are issuing a call to action to nations around the world. Uh, and I think it is fitting that uh, it is fitting that uh, we are studying this global issue, global effort uh, like girls' education, because when it comes to developing issues like girls' education, uh, our two countries, our two countries share a unique history as you've heard. President John F. Kennedy launched the Peace Corps back in 1961. That inspired youth groups here with our friends in Japan. President, Kennedy, President, President John F. Kennedy launched the Peace Corps back in 19, uh, 1961. That inspired the youth groups here uh, in Japan uh, who helped found GOCV, which is, which is uh, celebrating its 50th anniversary this year. And today, President Kennedy's daughter uh, is proudly serving, is proudly serving as America's ambassador to Japan, and uh, we are renewing our agreement to girls' education. Uh, we are renewing our agreement for Peace Corps, for the Peace Corps and the JOCV volunteers 
to work together to work together on issues like girls education <coughs> And I'm reminded of something that uh, a President Kennedy once said about young people who want to join the Peace Corps. He said that they are a light to all who seek a peaceful world. And I think it is just as true today as it was 50 years ago, especially when it comes to educating girls 50 years ago uh, so many other women around the world uh, business women uh, so many other uh, so many other uh, so many other so many other women leaders in developing countries Business women, politicians, uh, uh, professionals—they can trace their journey to back to. They can trace. They can trace their journey back to the Peace Corps or GOCV volunteers who invested in their education. The story of a woman named Anastasia M. Sosa from Malawi is a perfect example. When Anastasia, when, Anastasia was a perf when Anastasia was a girl, the volunteer came to her school to teach at her school. Uh, when Anastasia was a girl, the volunteer came to teach at her school in Malawi. Anastasia was struck by their kindness and generosity. Inspired by their encouragement, Anastasia wanted to build a pioneering legal career. And she eventually became the first, first female Chief Justice of Malawi's Supreme Court. In reflecting on the impact the volunteer had on her life, Chief Justice M. Sosa said, and this is her quote, she said that the volunteer shaped me into building to be what I am. She said that time. She said that time was the volunteer. Uh, she said that time was the Peace Corps and the JOCV volunteers helped me to have big dreams. And uh, now when Prime Minister Abe and Mrs. Abe talk about building a society where women shine. And I think this is what they're talking about. They're talking about letting the power, the genius, the creativity of women shine through. They are talking about letting, they're talking about, they're talking about ensuring that women and girls can pursue their dreams. And that's what this effort is all about. It's about creating a world where women shine, a world where every family, every community, and every nation can benefit from the contributions of all of its citizens, men and women, boys and girls. And I cannot think of better partner, better partners in this work the Mrs. Abe and the Prime Minister Abe and the great country they serve. I'm so grateful to them. I'm grateful to all of you. And I'm so grateful to the Peace Corps and the volunteers and the Peace Corps and the JLCV volunteers who are making this vision a reality every day across the globe. I look forward to working with all of you in the years ahead to give girls worldwide the education they so richly deserve. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you. Thank you so much.